everybody. Um, it's bedtime. My name is Bob Hartman, and I'm here to tell you a bedtime story. Um, who, who, who's that? That's, that's Mr. Jumble. <laughs> he's my friend, and he's going to be assisting me. What's that? What? Uh, you, you have a suggestion for the book that we can use tonight, the story that I can tell. Uh, that's brilliant, Mr. Jumble. And, and what did you have in mind? It's sitting in front of you. This is, this is your bedtime reading. You're, you're reading Tom Holland's Dominion, The Waking of the Western Mind. Well, yes, I, I appreciate, uh, Mr. Jumble, this is an excellent book, but probably not right for um, our audience here tonight, if you see what I mean. can highly recommend it, but I thought instead tonight we would do a picture book called The Prisoners, the Earthquake, and the Midnight Song. What's that? Yeah, it, it, it is one of my books, yes. And yes, I suppose in one respect it is a shameless plug, but it's also a very good book. It's brand new, just come out, and it's also about the Book of Acts. Well, it actually comes from the Book of Acts, which is our theme for the week. So I thought it would be, you know, appropriate for us to do that. Is that okay with you? Yeah, fine. All right. Now, as I say, it's called The Prisoners, the Earthquake, and the Midnight Song. Uh, it's published by the Good Book Company and written by me and illustrated by Catalina Echeverry. Now... There are some actions to do during the course of it, or at least some things I'd like you to say. What? You don't like actions. Why don't you like actions? Because you're an inanimate object. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, lots of people don't like actions, and I suppose that's as good an excuse as any. So you can just sort of sit and watch and listen, and if that makes you feel more comfortable there as well, that's, that's fine with me. <clears throat> but we will be making some sounds. We're going to make uh, like a soaring sound. We're going to go. <laughs> Can you do that with me? Here we go. <laughs> Lovely. We're going to make a, um, we're going to make a singing sound. We're going to sing a little tune. We're going to go. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you do that? Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is is Lord. Well done. Good, good. We're going to make um, a scraping sound like a like a sword being pulled from its scabbard. So we're going to go kind of like that. Okay. Shall you try that? Very good. Uh, we're going to make a shouting sound. Here we go. Very good. We're going to make a, um, a splish splashy water sound. Good, good. Uh, we're going to make a sad crying sound. Try it. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So um, if you're ready and you're ready, uh, Mr. Jumble, you obviously look ready. Um, we're going to do the story of the prisoners, the earthquake, and the midnight song. So here we go. Listen, do you hear it? A sound like someone sawing logs. A sound coming from a prison. A prison in Philippi. The jailer is snoring. <laughs> He's fast asleep, and his prisoners are all safely locked up for the night. But there's another sound. Do you hear it? It's coming from the very middle of the prison, the place from which no one escapes. And it's coming from two of the prisoners. Listen closely. Are they moaning and groaning? They could be. Their backs are bruised with the beating they were given. Their feet are locked up in stocks, but that's not it. Listen again. Are they complaining? They could be. They really shouldn't be there, you see. They were only helping a slave girl they met while walking through Philippi. They were helping her through the power of Jesus, who died so we can be forgiven, who came back from the dead so we can live forever, and who sent his Holy Spirit so we can follow him as our king. But our masters got angry and had them thrown in jail. Listen once more. Listen closely. Do you hear it? A simple tune. A set of words. They're singing. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's do it again. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what they're doing. They're singing. Singing songs of praise to God. And every other prisoner in the jail is listening to them. Their names are Paul and Silas. And they have come to Philippi to tell everyone there about Jesus, who died so we can be forgiven, who came back from the dead so we can live forever, and who sent his Holy Spirit so we can follow him as our king. And even though they don't deserve to be in jail, they trust God 
and they are taking this chance to tell the other prisoners about him. Hang on. Do you hear it? There's another sound. Oh, we didn't cover this early, but it's a good one. It's a rumbling sound. It's a grumbling sound. Can you go a rumbling sound and a grumbling sound? A sound from deep beneath the prison, a sound rising up from the ground, a sound like a shouting chorus to their songs. It's an earthquake. Let's go boom. Let's do it again. Boom! That's what it is. It shakes the walls and the floors. It knocks the doors off their hinges and the locks from off their stocks. And now every prisoner is free. But then listen. Do you hear it? The sharp scraping sound of a sword being drawn from its scabbard. Do you remember? Let's do it again. He's wide awake now. And... Do you hear it? He's crying. Oh, that's right. He's crying. Oh. You see, if the jailer's prisoners escape, then he must die. That's the law in Philippi. And when he sees the doors thrown open, he is sure that all the prisoners are gone. So he takes his sword to take his own life. And all he can think of is how he will miss his wife and his son and his daughter. But before he can do that, there is another sound. Listen, someone is shouting, hey, can we do it again? Hey, don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. The jailer can hardly believe it. So he grabs a torch and picks his way through the rubble to the middle of the prison to see for himself. And when he realizes that all the prisoners are indeed still there, he falls down at the feet of Paul and Silas. There was something different. Something special about these men, these foreigners who have come to Philippi with their stories about Jesus. So the jailer leads them out of the prison. And listen, he has a question for them. What must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas have an answer. Believe in the Lord Jesus. That's how you'll be saved. You and everyone in your house. Then they tell the jailer all about Jesus, who died so we can be forgiven, who came back from the dead so we can live forever, and who sent his Holy Spirit so that we can follow him as our king. And everyone in his house listens to his wife, his daughter, his sons, and his servants. And listen, do you hear it? The splissing, sploosh. The splashing, sploosh. It's water, splish, sploosh. The jailer washes Paul and Silas's wounds, and then Paul and Silas baptized the jailer in water and everyone in his household too. Then they all sit down for a tasty meal. And listen, do you hear it? A simple tune, a set of words. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's do it again. Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. They're singing. Not just Paul and Silas, but the jailer and everyone else in his house. They're singing and praising God because now they all believe in Jesus. And listen, do you hear it? The sound of voices. Millions of voices speaking in different languages all around the world. In cities and towns and farms and villages. In shops and factories. And yes, in prisons as well. People telling other people about Jesus and how they can be saved. The same Jesus and the same Holy Spirit that Paul and Silas told the jailer about. And listen, do you know what you can do? You can tell people about Jesus too. The end. There you go. So, uh, what did you think, Mr. Jumble? I, there's no need, you know, you don't have to like it, you know, obviously. But, you know, it would be nice if we could hear something positive. The pictures. You like the pictures, yes. Cat Catalina is amazing. She's done all of these tales that tell the truth for the Good Book Company. And uh, the clever thing she's done in this is that she's uh, actually illustrated the sounds. So there's the jailer snoring right there. And then um, when Paul and Silas start to sing, she's got this kind of lovely, uh, colorful rainbow sort of effect that shows their, their singing tunes. And uh, even the, the jailer, when he pulls the... The, uh, the sword out of the scabbard. She's got this kind of sharp, kind of scritchy, scratchy sort of a, a visual that kind of brings that to life as well. So yeah, she's a brilliant illustrator. Thank you. I'm sure she'll appreciate you know what you had to say. What? What? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, apparently, you know, in the midst of the current crisis, um, all the books in the Tale to Tell the Truth, Tales to Tell the Truth series um, are available at a 40% discount mm, if you get them straight from the good book company. Yeah. So uh, you might want to look into that. Uh, it is thegoodbook.com. So it's www.thegoodbook.com, to be entirely fair. Hang on a minute. Doesn't that sound a bit like a shameless plug, too? Yeah, okay. We need to afford the bananas. I get that. Okay, I understand entirely. Fair enough. All right. Well, Mr. Jumble, I think we're just about done here. Um, we have to have a prayer, though. Oh, we don't have to have a prayer, but, I mean, a prayer is a good thing to do at the end of this. So how about, you know, if we pray together? No, there's no need for you to close your eyes again, you know, inanimate object thing. I get that entirely. So here we go. You ready? Here we go. Dear God, thank you so much for Paul and Silas and the fact that they told so many people about Jesus who died so we could be forgiven and came back from the dead so we can live forever and who sent us Holy Spirit so we can follow Jesus as our King. We thank you that in whatever situation we face, you are there just like you were there with Paul and Silas. And we thank you that we too have the chance to tell people about Jesus. Bless us, we pray, particularly at this time, in Jesus' name, amen.
the Lord is my rock and my safe place and the one who takes me out of trouble. My Lord is my rock in whom I am safe. He is my safe covering, my saving strength and my strong tower.